All right, we are live. Welcome, welcome. This video is all about affiliate marketing. My name is Miles Beckler with milesbeckler.com. At this point in my career, my wife and I have built two incredibly successful websites and affiliate marketing is a very, very large part of what we do and how we monetize those websites. Just this past month, I'm starting a third project. This is a brand new affiliate marketing site. It is not going to be a personal brand. It's just focused on a specific type of product, mainly doing review-based content. I'm looking to help people who are searching for the best thing, find what the best thing is through reviews. And when I make that connection for them, I will earn some income. This specific video here is designed to be a question and answer. In the description of this video, you will see many of the trainings that I've already done, the free trainings here on YouTube. I don't have an affiliate marketing course. I'm not trying to push any courses at you. Um, I do reference some that have helped me, but ultimately you can do this with 100% effort. My wife and I started our entire business with a $95 and 40 cent investment in website hosting and a domain. We figured everything out from how to install WordPress and themes and content marketing, SEO, all of that stuff. We just figured out by doing these were pre YouTube days. So you have the benefit of actually getting to go on YouTube and watch my how to do keyword research video where I teach you how to do keyword research, et cetera, et cetera. So specifically, I want to answer your questions. I want to dive in before we do. I want to talk a little bit about what I consider to be the right way to do this type of affiliate marketing. Um, I'm seeing all kinds of people popping in saying, hello, Marco, David, I appreciate the kind words from you right there, my man. Um, North Tijuana, Justin Roberts is in San Diego. I like it, my man. Uh, I'm assuming you guys can all hear me and see me well. Dooley, Rocky, Copeland, Tawana. Mar wow, we got people just, just rolling on. Happy to have you guys here. So this approach and what I'm doing right now is literally the, I wanna make money online, I don't really know what to do. I don't really have any marketable skills per se. I'm starting at zero and I want to help people make money online. The big theory here is, and we'll probably jump on the computer in a minute to show you how this actually works out. The big theory is that since everyone has these things, when we look for something to purchase, and since Amazon has, I don't know, hundreds of millions of products. I have no idea how many SKUs Amazon has, but they have everything, right? Literally, they have everything. So when someone's ready to buy a thing, I don't care if it's a sewing machine, I don't care if it's crocheting needles, I don't care if it's a blender, uh, a weed whacker, a lawnmower, a new watch, a fountain pen. I have used pens as examples before, and I finally have got myself a fancy fountain pen. I don't really know why, I'm just kind of a pen geek, right? Like when we go to buy all these random things we want or need in our life, we want the best ones. People, when given the opportunity, will invest in quality. And how do you know what's the best one? Well, most people turn to Google and they type in things like best sewing machine, but maybe they type best sewing machine for quilting because they're quilters and they don't just want the best sewing machine that would work for garments. They want the best sewing machine for exactly what they want. Maybe they're looking for the best electric riding lawnmower for hills. Maybe they're looking for the best electric weed whacker. Maybe they're looking for the best fishing pole for bass. And what I'm getting at is the user behavior of people, the moment before they go buy something, they're looking for the best variation of a thing that is super specific to how they want to use the thing. That means there's all of these potential search phrases out there. And these aren't 50,000 a month search volume. These aren't 20,000 a month search volume. These are relatively small monthly search volume. They might be 300 searches a month. They might be 3000 searches per month. They're probably going to be in and around on that range, right? I'd say from uh, 500 to 5,000 is going to be a very consistent range, but they're incredibly specific. And when that user is searching for the best sewing machine for quilting, they know the goal they're trying to get. They know what they want to do with that machine and they know what they want. They've already sold themselves, generally speaking. And you know this because the awareness of the search intent, right? So the search intent, the intent behind that search phrase is not do I need a sewing machine to quilt? It's not how to quilt. It's not abstract. It's way down the funnel. It's one step away from them being ready to purchase. They're simply looking for someone who's authoritative, who's knowledgeable, 
really they're looking for somebody who ranks well in Google, who's going to say, this is the best one. It's the equivalent of in the 1960s, when someone would walk into a department store, into a Sears Roebuck and say, I need a sewing machine. And the salesperson would go, well, what are you gonna use a sewing machine for? Well, I'm gonna be doing quilting, great. Well, you want this model here because it's got the boom, 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 boom. There's a shelf, there's a, a sh an aisle full of sewing machines. And the salesperson says, this is the one you want because it fits your exact needs. It's going to help you accomplish what you want. But we don't go into stores anymore. We don't do that anymore. Sears is going under at this point in time. Maybe it was bought out, I don't know. But like the world has changed. What do we do? We're searching on these things and we need the equivalent of that experience to happen. And when that does, and that happens effectively in the right way, maybe you need to talk about the best sewing machine for quilting under a hundred dollars. Maybe you need it on that same post, have it broken up to where here's the best of the best. It's 550 bucks. But if you need the best budget option, it's this one. If you need the best, best compact version, it's this one, right? Because even in that idea of I want the best sewing machine for quilting, well, what if they live in a really small apartment and they don't have much space and they can't use a whole big one, they need a small one, okay? What if they are on a tight budget? What if they're not on a tight budget and they are, they make $350,000 a year and they, they care about quality and they're like, I don't care how much it costs. I want the best damn. So you need your post when it meets them to help them identify the right one. And when you do that, and when your content shows that you have clearly done the research for them, you clearly have laid it all out in a way that's logical. They're going to click through and they're going to buy. And that cookie gets planted on their machine and you earn a commission when that does happen. So that's really the overarching approach. That's how this works. That's, that's how the game works. And I think people are totally understanding it. I'm looking inside of the comments right now. So if you're with us, thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, people all over the world have these uh, are coming on. I do appreciate that. So, um, Leanne Price is saying, how do you tell where to find the keyword niche research using KW finder to help narrow down your niche topic? So, Let's jump on, okay? I, I just gave you guys an example. I wanna actually do a little screen share and I'm gonna come in for your questions. I'm gonna go, so if you've got specific questions about affiliate marketing, ask them. I saw one about an arbitrage model. We can kind of talk about a little bit of those other things. We have a little water here and um, I'm gonna jump right into Google and I'm gonna show you how do I find these keyword phrases? Because generally speaking, looking in the keyword research tool is the second step. If you go on my channel um, under playlists, I have a playlist that's dedicated to keyword research. You'll notice that the first uh, video on that playlist, and this is very, very intentional, is me on a whiteboard doing a brainstorm. And that's really the first place that you always start is just thinking. We need to think about what are all the things they might look for. And let's go show you how I do that. One of the easy ways to do that brainstorm. Um, the other one was on a whiteboard. We're going to do this using Google. So let me share my entire screen. And at this point, you can see that. So if you're liking this video, give me a thumbs up on this video here. I see you guys here. King River loves the example. Um, cool. Uh, we've got a, a celebrity in the quilting space on online with us today. So I figured I'd go with it. Okay. So I'm on the Google. I know you guys know this website. Um, again, hit that thumbs up button. If you enjoy this content, these types of live videos. So what I'm going to do is you can see, I've been looking at some random stuff here. So I'm going to type in best and then let's go with what were we just doing? The, the best, um, sewing machine, E W. Oh gosh. Sewing E W I S E W I N. There you go. Okay. I even got it right. I, I honestly haven't looked. You, it would be blue if I had looked at this before. So best sewing machine, best sewing machine for quilting, best sewing machine 2019, best sewing and embroidering machine, ding, ding, ding. I don't even know if that's a different thing or if there's there's one device that can do both. That's what you need to do. Best sewing machine for leather. So if I was going into the quote unquote sewing machine niche, these are all of the different phrases I would go after. So I would write these down and then I would go take each one of these and cross reference them in keyword finder. And I would find what the search volume is for each of them. And I would look at the, uh, at the keyword difficulty. And that's how I would kind of decide which ones I go after. So let's go best sewing machine. And now I'm going to type in four. So now I just typed in four and it's got all of the different things for denim, for making clothes. So this is what I mean when our world is so focused in the deep niches. Now we want to know exactly which one is best for us. Best sewing machine for beginners. Oh my gosh. Right? So let's say best sewing machine for 100. 
for $100, for $1,000. And this is what I'm saying. There's, there's people wanting the cheap one. And then there's people who are ready to invest in quality. They know they get what they pay for and they're ready. And whether you're willing to spend $1,000 on a sewing machine or not, this proves that some people are looking to spend $1,000 on a sewing machine. And that's where your review gets to meet them and you'll make a better commission on a $1,000 one, but it's probably going to have lower search volume. So I'm going to look over at the comments here and I think this is making sense. So Justin Charnell said, answer the public is also a really good tool. I totally agree with you. Um, I don't pay for their paid version, but it is. Um, do I have passion? Do you have to have passion or do I have passion about the niche that you choose? I don't. So on this newest website that I've chosen, it's just a random thing. I went to a website that sells pre-made affiliate sites because I didn't want to go through the process of the original build out. And I looked through their inventory and I was like, eh, I know about those. I kind of know what those things are. I'm going to go with it. Now, would I personally go into the sewing machine niche, having no experience with the sewing machine, having never used a sewing machine? My mom had one when I was a kid. Um, I don't have one here. I have no way to take, no, there's no way I would go into that niche personally. So I think you need to have affinity for it or at least curiosity for it. Um, so let's do another one, best electric. So electric, okay. So I think best electric toothbrush shows up. That's pretty crazy because some of these electric toothbrushes can be 99 to $150. So that's literally an entire niche website right there in and of itself. But you can see best electric lawn mower showing up. I got a lot of space on this new property that I picked up. It's over 20 acres. Um, I've been spending a lot of time with lawn mowers and weed whackers and trim, tr string trimmers and, and brush hogs. So we're going to go down that rabbit hole a little bit. So best electric lawn mower. And again, don't, you wouldn't go into this. If you live in an apartment, you have no lawn, you know, nothing about lawn mowers, nothing about lawn care. You don't care about lawn care. You want to go with something that you have an affinity for. If you're an urban individual and you're on a longboard skateboard and you do electric skateboards, you might want to be doing best electric skateboard. But what I'm trying to show you here is you could do like green lawn care could potentially be a niche, right? So under green lawn care or whisper quiet lawn care is another way because I love the fact that my electric mower is almost silent. It's so I can listen to my audiobooks while I'm mowing, which is amazing. But anyways, best electric lawn. And then we have mower, edger, mower cordless, trimmer, mower, tools, mower for small yard. So we can already see mower four popping up. So let's do that. Mower four. So best electric lawn mower for small yard, best electric mower for large yard, for hills, for small lawn, for uneven ground, for wet grass, for so like these are each posts. You need to do a review post for all of them. And that's exactly what we're going at. So then let's do best electric string trimmer. So best electric string trimmer 2019, cordless under $100. I'm seeing Reddit pop up and I would definitely go look at the Reddits to see what people talk about. So best electric um, hedge trimmer. Um, hedge trimmer, hedge clippers, hedge trimmer. Like, so I'm just trying to show you that there's so many, and then we can do like best fishing pole for best fishing pole for kids, for bass, for beginners, for three-year-old, for trout, for catfish, for toddler, for the best fishing pole for the money. That's somebody who's like, they want the really, you know, they're willing to spend a little bit more, um, best fishing lure for, I mean, it just, it goes on and on. So I literally let Google see this for me and then let's do real quick. So we'll go best. Um, what was the first one we were on? Sewing machine, E-W-I-N-G, sewing machine, A-C-H-I-N-E. So let's say I'm doing best sewing machine. Another way to get this kind of content is you search it and then you go down to the bottom. And here at the bottom, you see the other kinds of things they come up with. So you might get different things here, you might not. But I'm seeing best sewing machine for advanced sewers, best sewing machine for seamstress. We didn't see those on the original ones. And then one other thing that you can do, so you can go best sewing machine for A. And it has everything that starts with an A and then you can go B, right? So now I see buttonholes, bag making, basic use, beginners making clothes, boat canvas. Oh my God, blankets. So then we'll do C, best sewing machine for clothes, for cosplay, for canvas and letter. Oh my gosh, cosplay. I didn't even think about that. That's crazy, right? D, best sewing machine for denim, darning, dressmaking, dummies, decorative stitches, draperies, delicate fabrics. Like it's nonstop where you got an idea of where you're going to get the next, I don't know, year of content ideas. This is, this is where it comes from. So I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to stop sharing now. I'm going to pop back on and um, we're here. So this is the idea, right? 
So I'm starting a brand new website and a little perspective on this new website. I've been doing this money-making thing online since 2003. I've made a couple, two and a half, working on my third million dollars online right now. We'll probably cross that threshold this year. Um, I, I kind of know what I'm doing, right? We built up my wife's brand extremely successfully. I built this brand up in three years. So I've done in about three years on this brand, what it took me about six or seven years to do with my first brand. So I'm condensing the time it takes to get to success. I'm proving over and over and over that what I do works, right? I can drive traffic, I can rank things. I'm and I teach it all here on YouTube. So I'm bringing a good amount of skills with me is all I'm trying to detail here. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just trying to impress upon you that I'm not a beginner at this right now. My logical, honest assessment is that I have a really good chance of making $3,000 per month in a year. And I see a lot of comments on my other videos of people who are like, man, I'm gonna make five grand a month in 90 days. Like, I don't know. And maybe you happen to be a magician. I'm not a magician. I'm a hardworking individual with a great work ethic who is has skills in digital marketing. And I'm pretty sure it's going to take me about a year to build up a $3,000 a month cash flow. Perspective is key. Do I know people who have generated more than $3,000 a month in their first year doing a straight affiliate site? I do. I know people who've gotten almost up to the $8,000 a month mark, which is almost to the hundred figure, $100,000 a year mark. Um, that's really tough to do. So I have a very clear focused goal. I feel like it's an aggressive goal. So if you're on the path, just know that you might make 1500 or $2,000 a month after a year of hard work. And how am I going about this content? Really, truly, like, honestly, I'm going to post between eight and 12 posts per month, every month for a year. If I do 12 a month for 12 months, that's 144 posts. If I do eight a month for 12 months, that's going to be about uh, 96. I will absolutely cross the hundred mark. I say it all the time in my content. 90 day challenge is one of the ideas, 120 day challenge. Like how can we get you to a hundred great optimized pieces of content? And that's the starting point, right? That's when I've really just established myself as somebody who's done enough work to really cover a hundred of those phrases that pop up in one specific space. That's how I show Google that I kind of know what I'm talking about because I've just covered every single question that Google users might have. That's how I let my users know that they can trust what I'm talking about because they can go look at all of the different content I put out. And they're like, man, this person clearly knows everything about sewing machines because they clearly have built a massive sewing machine site here. It just increases that increases that trust right there. That's really it. Um, 80% of my content will be direct review content, directly saying best sewing machine for denim and telling them exactly which ones to pick. I will have some content. The 20% of what I'm gonna do will be informational. It's not going to be um, transactional in nature. And that's the stuff I'm gonna be able to build links to. So it might be um, 47 quilt patterns that you can, so in an afternoon, I have no idea what I'm talking about if you haven't noticed, but it would be things like that, that I would be able to go reach out to people and say, Hey, I just put together this, this huge ultra mega post on all of the different sewing patterns for quilting. Do you want to share it? And other quilting sites have a high likelihood of sharing it. So I get them to share my really good informative posts. That's 20% of my effort. That's how I get backlinks. That's how I build authority. That's how I get social buzz. When people share that, uh, I can also do roundup posts, right? The the top 10 quilters on Instagram, you need to be following. And I go write the post and I go reach out to all of them and DM them on Instagram and say, Hey, the top 35 quilters on Pinterest, you must be following. And then I go reach out to all of them. Once that post is published and say, Hey, you made my top 25 list. I love what you do. I've been following you for years. I thought I would send it over to you, send them the link. If you want to share it, that'd be really cool. But either way, keep doing what you're doing. Cause I love your content. You, you can ask, but you can't guarantee you're going to get a link. And that's the type of content that gets out. So that's the kind of content that's going to get social shares and social buzz, which Google's monitoring. And it's also going to get backlinks because it's really, uh, when, I mean, everybody loves like patting themselves on the back, stroking their ego, whatever you call it. Right. Somebody emails me like miles, you made my list of top. I, I get tweeted this every once in a while. Miles, you made my list of top five internet marketers to follow in 2019. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Like they took action. They wrote a list and they included me. Like, how cool is that? Retweet. Right. And then it goes out to all my followers and a bunch of my followers retweet it. Google's monitoring this. Google indexes all the tweets and all the pins and all of the, all those social shares, all those things get, get, picked up and they are um, a very small ranking factor, but they're a ranking factor um, and they're, they're needed. So 
that's it, right? Like, I don't know, is, am I oversimplifying it for you? Like, it's a lot of work. It's a hundred and something posts that are each probably gonna be 2000 to 3000 words that are gonna be well researched. And like, that's a lot of work. And I don't have time for that. So I'm throwing a bunch of money at it. Okay, I'm paying somewhere around $150 a post is probably gonna be my average cost, it might be upwards of $200 a post. That's because I don't have time to do it. Uh, you could just write it yourself, right? Spend the time, research it, do all the due diligence, read through the reviews, do what you got to do. I mean, it's tough. But but the value you're bringing to the marketplace in this world is when Sally Joe in Baton Rouge, Louisiana needs to get a sewing machine, she's relying on your research. So the fact that you did all of the research and you laid it out and you really actually did the work to really truly find which one was the best one. She finds it, she feels it. She's like, oh, thank God. I don't have to do six hours of research to pick. I'm just going to trust you because you clearly know what you're talking about. Bingo. That's when you've won. And what happens is our world is we have so many billions of people with these things in their pocket, all searching for the best thing. Um, the rabbit hole goes really, really deep fountain pens. Like these things can be like thousands of freaking dollars when I could buy a pen like this, which is a very nice pen for three bucks. Right? So the rabbit hole goes deep and people are looking for super expensive watches, super expensive, everything, right? It, it, that's just the way our world works. We got Netflix on over here. We got social media on our tablet and we're looking on Amazon. We're looking for something to buy on Amazon because that's just the way it is today. So at that point, I think we've made some clear um, headway on the entire overall idea that we're working with. I'm jumping over the comments now because like, does this make sense? Like it, what part of this doesn't make sense? Um, I think a lot of people are hesitating to take action and like, well, it's a lot of work. Yeah, but so is going to a desk job for 40 years to retire with not enough money to cover you for the rest of your life. Like, oh, that is horrible. That is, that is, that is hell in my personal opinion, right? And the hard work that my wife and I do the late nights, I was up till 10. We've got a really big issue going on with a, a delivery system that just imploded on itself, a WordPress plugin. Uh, I'm literally having to replace it. I'm cutting it out with a scalpel. I was, I, I pulled 16 hour night, two nights ago, day, uh, 14 hours yesterday, just late into the night. I mean, it's work, but I mean, at least I don't have to go to an office. At least I can do it here from my, you know, the comfort of one of my places, right? Um, I don't know. It's worth it to me. So I'm gonna go down and see what kind of question marks, question marks, questions you guys have. Um, Leanne, I covered that one. I hope that made sense. So King River, we have to get in between the customer and the seller. Got it. You would say you're now in the learning to rank a site phrase. That's it. And you're the whole process. The cool thing about this, the byproduct of this is you're going to learn the digital marketing skills that you can leverage for all kinds of different things. So I started learning these digital marketing skills, working with my wife, and then I was able to apply it to local businesses because I was able to show like, look, my wife's site went from getting a hundred visitors a day to a thousand visitors a day in the last three months because we're doing this content marketing stuff. Would you like me to do that stuff that we're doing for here for your business? Would it help your business to get 10 times the eyeballs on what you're doing? Uh, if so, like I can help. And it was literally, I was posting it on Facebook and people were just coming out of the woodwork asking for help because business owners know if you're not ranking well on Google, if you're not doing well digitally, you're, you're failing and nobody trusts anybody. Everybody's getting spammed out with SEO requests. So that's what I'm saying is you can build the skills, the digital marketing skills. You can build your case study. You can build your proof that you know what you're talking about that then can be sold in other ways. And obviously eventually when you've gone through the process of making five or six affiliate sites that are making between between three grand and 10 grand a month each, and you got $75,000 a month consistent cash flow coming in that's all managed by a team, you might make a course on how you did that. And then you could sell the course and you could make a whole lot of money selling the courses, or you might just keep doing what you're doing. So that's what I think. And um, Justin Charnell says, I know you're going for passive, but your thoughts on your own products on your new site. I was linking to digital downloads, decided to enter the market, never made a quicker ROI with the traffic there for sure. Selling. And that's what my wife does. And what I do, we sell digital downloadable products. It's better margins. Obviously we get 97% margins uh, when I'm using organic traffic. Um, I get maybe uh, depending, I, I don't know, uh, with paid traffic, right? The, the margins change, but um when you own that customer transaction. So sometimes you can promote types of products that ultimately you can go create your own variation of and release. But for a lot of people, that's that's adding more required skills versus 
I kind of know what sewing machines are. My mom had one. I've been on them since I was a girl. I know everything since I was a kid, right? I know everything about them. I could just, I could do that, right? Or the lawn care guy who's like, man, I'm out in my yard. I love my riding mower. I got seven mowers. I'm always hedge trimming and edging and doing all this. And maybe they're just now transitioning all over to an electric fleet of tools. And they're like, yeah, I could totally do this, right? Go on YouTube. There's guys and gals who are doing reviews on all of this stuff. And there's room at the top for you. There's always room at the top for you. Um, Elaine loves the sewing machine example. I'm glad that was there. And Justin, I'm not going for passive here. Um, this is active, right? I'm working with my team. I'm working with these people. I'm building an active passive income stream. I'm just looking to build another asset, right? The difference between wealthy people and people who look like they make money, but don't actually make a lot of money or have a lot of money is wealthy people invest in assets, right? I'm not buying a Lambo to try to impress you, right? I could put a fancy car behind me and try to impress you. That's a liability, right? That thing does not generate cash flow for me. It's a money pit that I throw money into for oil changes and tires and cars and alignments and all the things it will eventually need. A clutch on a Ferrari F50, no thank you. I don't wanna play that game, I'm cool. I got a pickup truck, right? Because I got 20 acres and I needed a pickup truck. So I went and got a really nice diesel truck. Um, so. I buy and build things that are going to generate positive cash flow. Read Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's and that's where when you see people who are flashing liabilities like Lamborghinis, it's a joke. Like they're literally, it just means they don't know what wealth is. You might not get that what they're showing you is a liability and not an asset. And I'm just building and collecting assets. And I, my sleeves are rolled up. My fingernails are well, not that dirty. No, but uh, like I'm I'm doing the work with my team. So as I have time, I'm in on it. I don't consider this passive. This is active. Um, I'm just I am hiring out a lot of people. People on this. Um, Storm Singer is pumped for the case study, taking action slowly. That's the way to go. Slow and steady is actually totally to the way. Um, Carla says, do, I, do you have to be passionate about the niche? We covered that one. Um, Kamikaze talking about this. Metro Atlanta checking in. What's up, ATL? Glad you're getting value out of this. Um, so Leanne, you're trying to pick between a few niches to narrow your core niche choice. I, I totally get that. At some point you need to just take the leap and choose. You can always pivot it, right? You can always adapt what you're working on. So a couple of things to consider when choosing a niche is, are there $100 to $300 products available to sell? Because if you're only able to sell uh, Amazon affiliate stuff, you might be in the four to 8% commission range. They have some commissions that go up to 15%. You can look at places like avantlink.com, uh, sharesale.com, and cj.com, which are other affiliate networks to maybe get better commission rates, but physical goods, it's rare that you'll see above 15% commissions. So if you're doing 15% commissions on $20 things versus 15% commission on $200 things that can possibly move the needle, right? I wouldn't necessarily go after the pen niche over the sewing machine niche. I don't know what sewing machines cost, but I, I, I got a feeling an average sewing machine would be at least three to $500, right? I think there might be some cheap ones under 150, but I think, you know, in that range, that just means there's bigger commissions. So that can sometimes lead. Um, then what we were just talking about, is there a way to transition your niche into digital training courses? I think the sewing niche, you could sell uh, downloadable patterns. You could sell an entire training course for beginners. So there's a lot of ways that it could go and that could just really open up massive other legs of revenue for you. I wouldn't do that until I had a bunch of traffic going uh, and my audience was was literally asking for that. Whereas like pens, I guess um, calligraphy, calligraphy pens, you know, maybe a how to do calligraphy training. I don't know how much calligraphy pens are if they're sold in sets, but that that's a possibility, right? Um, I don't know. I can't really think of a, a video course on like lawn mowing. So you kind of lose that fishing they buy a lot of things, right? Golf too. You might be able to, you might be able to sell training on golf, to be honest. I think golf would have a better likelihood of selling training, um, fitness, workout equipment. You can review kettlebells and workout equipment. Eventually they might want to join a $15 a month home gym, online on demand home gym thing where you, uh, give them, uh, gym lessons, um, that they could download. That would be very good margins for you there. So that was the other side is it, does it transition somehow to a digital thing? And then finally, the last question, maybe, maybe it's the first question in this is what are you convinced that for the next three years, you're going to be curious enough about to be researching, writing about, talking about, thinking about, um, for the next three years or so. Uh, if you're, if that's why sewing machines would not work for me, I would get bored 
even if I was making good money on it, I would get bored because I just don't do it's not it's not something I do It's not something I deal with not something I care about tree care is something I, I'm you know chainsaws and and pole saws that that's pretty much like that's one of my new hobbies and I actually I love it it's it's just so away from the computer for me um I just go up on the hillside and just kind of like it's it's amazing I put on my headphones and go and I love it and um so that would be something I would lean towards in that sense um so let's see, Orlando Neurotherapy, that got hidden, but I've got it here. Um, any thoughts on branding your YouTube channel? Do you lose your current subscribers if you do that? Change the name if you want to change the name. It's that, that easy. Uh, you won't lose people, I don't think. Um, D. Cole, jumping ahead, but how do you do the reviews when you don't buy all of the products to give an honest review? So the the niche I chose, I have a lot of the I have a lot of this stuff around. I, uh, it's something I've used for for years. I have affinity for, but it's a great question, right? So ModernCastle.com is a great review website. They've done well. They do uh, vacuum cleaners, mops. Uh, smart home things. I think smart home stuff is really smart and he buys it. He literally buys it. And at this point he's got enough traffic and enough clout that they'd give it to him. But if you were going to do, if I was going to do vacuum, I'll use me. If I was going to do vacuum cleaner reviews, um, and you could spend 500 bucks on a vacuum pretty easily. And there's probably some shark NATO vacuums that are like 150 that do that job. Well, how do you know? Go to the vacuum store, go to the Walmarts, go to every big box store, get hands on it, play with it, work it, bounce it, fill it, shake it, drop it. Not, not terribly drop it, but like, is it, is it plasticky? Like, like go get pictures of you hands on, like just be resourceful, I guess is what I'm saying. There's, there's always a resourceful way to really figure it out. And if I'm doing tree care and lawn care, so I get my hands on the stuff, I, I buy something, I know that, um, and I'm going, I'm going like, I'm going a little bit towards the gray hat, but, um, I'm mentioning this because I have to return my lawnmower. So I got an electric lawnmower. I got, it has a 90 day return policy from Home Depot. And it's not like two things have already broken on it. And I got a big lawn and I, I thought it might be, I might have more than it could handle. I kind of thought that going into it. And the guy was like, we got a 90 day return policy. Use it, try it. If you don't love it, bring it back. We're, we're okay with that. So that's within their policy range. I wouldn't abuse that personally, but I mean, there's that side of it as well. Um, who do you know? Neighbors, friend, like, like just be resourceful is how you get hands on as much stuff. Um, P Echigure, I appreciate that. Um, and, and so Carla and Julianne kind of reflected that question and, and agree. With it. So the more hands on you can get, the more real you can get with things, the better. Um, the worst case scenario I think is spending a ton of time mining through the Amazon reviews, the Walmart reviews, and really look at what people are talking about it and mining through the other reviews. But one of the problems, and this is one of the challenges with internet marketing right now and these types of, of websites is you get these watered down variations. And I, I spot them from a mile away. When I went looking for best electric lawnmower, I was like, Ooh, I know, I know, I know the course these guys followed and they clearly don't actually know. And you'll know when you find somebody who actually is passionate about lawnmowers, you might think who is passionate about, they are out there. I'm telling you, just go to YouTube. It'll blow your freaking mind. Um, there's people passionate about everything in this world. You can find people passionate about ants. Oh, I just bought a worm bin. Um, it's a verma composting bin. I've had one before and it's, um, you know, I got a thousand, uh, red wigglers that my coffee grounds, my banana peels, some of my juice pulks. I do a bunch of juicing. Um, it just goes in the worms, turn it into great soil and they turn it for my garden. Right. And it's just a closed loop system. I could totally make a whole niche site on that. And like, I love having worms there. They're in my house. Like I just, it's the weirdest thing in the world, but I'm like totally about it. And there's all kinds of people about it. And most people are like worms, like, like wouldn't don't even know that that's even a thing. Composting. It's just, it's crazy. It goes on forever. Um, so Justin says 3k will be a cakewalk with 48 to 50 grand spend. I think it is. I think I'm being conservative with these numbers. I think it could easily pop up to five grand because I see ways to kind of branch out from my main niche. Um, already, I'm already kind of thinking about that. Um, and that's where my story along with these things kind of align up together. So that's, that's my goal. And at three grand a month income, for a $50,000 investment. It's a way better uh, cash flow asset than real estate that would be easier to sell and more movable, right? I'm not locked in. I don't have to deal with tenants. Oh gosh, right? Uh, no, no toilets, no termites, no tenants, none of that. Ugh that I've dealt with. I've done real estate investing. I've, I've had tenants and, and it's, it, it can be great, but it can, I mean, it's a, it's a damn job for sure. Um, so nor, 
Nokery Cat, uh, how do you decide what is best if you don't know the niche? Um, a, choose a niche that you do know, and B, go get hands on with the products and, and figure out a process of how do I compare all these things? What are your criteria for the things? If I was searching at fishing poles, I'd smack it against a tree once, uh, the tip action, the the weight, the balance in your hand. I don't know, I just you just make up your criteria and then you you mark them all the same and this one gets a 3.5, this one gets a 4.7, this one's a five star rating. I don't know, you know, that's that's kind of it. Um, Justin Charnel said Miles Wirecutter Beckler. And I love that reference. So Wirecutter, um, that's a great example, Justin. And that site sold for millions of dollars. And if you don't know what the Wirecutter is, it was sold to a major news outlet. Nerd Wallet is another one. Somebody just started this. It was a nerdy way to look at personal finance is what it was. Credit card, what's the best credit card airline points? The points guy, oh my God, is he killing it? That dude has such a uh, powerful business all built around credit card points, how to get frequent flyer points. He has a big forum. So he's got a bunch of user generated content now. Um, and these, these are multi-million, if not like 10, $20 million plus businesses that all started as just basic affiliate review websites. So the potential for massive growth is here in this industry. Um, yeah, it's pretty powerful. So Jeremy Ferguson says, affiliate marketing will be your second thing along with digital marketing for local businesses. It makes sense. They work together. Um, Sandy says it all makes sense. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. So Orlando Neurotherapy, 15 years in the corporate world and you've never been happier than to hustle seven days a week to be your own boss. Should have done it sooner. I agree. Like I'm blessed. Every day I get to come down here and, and grind it out and work even if I'm working on a massive challenge because an expensive paid solution imploded on itself and I need to replace it. I'm still grateful for this. Um, we got down under in the house. What's up, Catherine? I'm excited that Australia, most of my lives are in the morning. Uh, so Australia doesn't always get time to, to pop in here. Um, hey, Miles, do you think weight loss is a good niche for affiliate marketing? I do. If you go to Google Trends and you look at weight loss versus make money online, you will see that hundreds and thousands of times just massively larger. I think in, especially in the United States, um, losing weight is one of the biggest problems that most people have. And I mean, it's, it's just one of the biggest, most common problems that people have. So I absolutely do think it is. Um, please show the WP plugin so you can avoid it. Uh, no, they get no lip service on here and it's not even a plugin. It's a, it's, it's an old script. It's something that, that it's heyday was like 10 years ago. Like it won't even be on your radar. I, I it's, it's, it's gone and done. Um, how did I hire my project manager? They reached out to me on YouTube, to be perfectly honest, asking to write content for me in August of 2017, maybe September of 2017. And we've kind of started working together and been working on it ever since. So he does my, he's been managing my content marketing on my site, on the Miles Bechter site. So if you go to my blog, all that content is actually him and his team and he's been managing that. And it's been a rocky road to get, um, boy, it's been a tough, challenging road to get our processes dialed. But at this point, uh, things are going good. And we decided this was a worthy endeavor to, to work on together. Um, Tammy Poppy, regarding content, should you focus on creating content for the awareness stage or just at the interest and consideration ready to buy stage? So ultimately, you need to do all of it, right? And again, I'm 80% uh, as far down the awareness scale as I can because they're ready to buy. That's it. And I, I need that because I need to see if I'm only going to do 30 posts, I need most of those posts to start generating a bit of cash flow. And if I'm only selling 30 and $50 things and I'm getting 4% off of it, that's a lot of two, $3 checks that are coming in. I think my math is good on that. 5% on $10 is 50 cents. So 5% on $40 is two bucks. Okay. So it's a volume game. So I'm getting as many of those out as I can. And then 20% is on the earlier stages of awareness, really shareable content. That'll bring the authority in. You link that authority to your other review posts and all in all that raises your whole website's authority. And that's why we do both types, but ultimately I want review content. Like that's, that's really what, what I'm after because that's where the money comes back in. So Robert Zinke, you want to start outsourcing and you rewatch the videos regarding it. Do you think 300 or 400 a month is enough for a talented virtual assistant from onlinejobs.ph to help with content editing and distribution? So no. And the reason is content editing. When you want someone in the Philippines whose English is their second language, because Tagalog or Tagalog is the original native language, they do learn English young. They definitely do. And the English in the Philippines is great, but it is not perfect. It ain't perfect. So my final touch editors are all in the US. And that's why I say I don't think so. 
Um, I think you can find a great virtual assistant who can do a bunch of research. They can put together lists. They can pull out bits and pieces. They can get a lot of that stuff done. But I think eventually you're gonna need somebody in the US uh, or at least somebody in a uh, native English speaking country who can like really do that final touch. Because if I'm reading your review site and, and there's errors and typos and grammatical errors, like I'll, I'll overlook some, but if it's bad, if it's like they are not in this country, I'm out because we've all, we all get spammed by, uh, hello, dear sirs, please, I want to sell you SEO services, right? And it's like, oh God, like it's just, it's just a, you know, um, you can just tell it's rubbish. And um, although Google can't tell it's rubbish, uh, the users would, and so, I pay a lot more than that for writing help specifically. Um, what is the best way to hire a project manager? Uh, so do you know someone who can really keep things on track? Uh, generally speaking, Upwork is a great place to find talent in Western countries um, and just plan to, to hire possibly three or four times over to find people. Like hiring is tough. I don't care if you're in the corporate world. I don't care if you're in the entrepreneurship world. Hiring is extremely difficult. Training people is difficult. Uh, but the reward on the other side, it's all front loaded. But man, once you get somebody who's dialed in, uh, that's what I'll say. It was it was a rough road with my teammate on the content stuff at first. But now we're we just we got like all kinds of things going on, and it's actually fun and easy now. There was times where we almost parted ways because um, the quality was down. The, how long it took was it, like it, there's a lot of challenges with it. So so um, identifying ambition is one of the things in hiring that's helped me a ton is like, where are those just hyper ambitious people? And they might be working at a Denny's making, you know, seven, eight, nine bucks an hour. And you just, she just got that charm. She, you know, like, you're just a man, like, like sometimes that's where you go to, to hire people. That's what Dan Kennedy actually that came straight from Dan Kennedy. Um, so Alan said, I saw the video about Facebook ads and the $5 a day strategy, but how can collect Facebook enough data about your audience with every click will cost you a dollar. So my clicks are way cheaper than that. That's why. Um, and it's just time, right? So if you get dollar clicks, $5 a day, that's five clicks a day. Um, I don't know what you're doing it, to have $5 clicks. If you're going up in the internet marketing world to make money online world, you better have 10 years of experience making money online. You better be one of the best in the world at copywriting and all of the things required. If you went and signed up for a system that says, hey, you're one of us now, so go promote our system to other people, like they're scamming you into wasting your money as ad spend to promote their product, right? You are the, you're the joker, you're the sucker at that table. They make all of the money. It's just like MLMs, right? Like they just, oh, bring in new blood, bring in new recruits. Why? Because that's how they make their money. That's why they want you, they don't wanna go sell that shit. They don't wanna promote it to their friends and family. They want you to do it, right? So if you're in a business model that has you trying to promote something on Facebook that is just doing what the person who got you in is doing and they gave you a share funnel and you just take my funnel and just plug it in and run, here's my ads, like it's a total scam, run away. Um, and then learn the skills on, on how to actually do it. But my clicks cost between eight and 12 cents each. My leads cost 30 to 40 cents each. Uh, some campaigns have leads upwards of 80 cents each, but I have a really good, really low cost per customer on those. Um, so it's, it's lots of, um, Lots of work. Uh, Kamikaze says lawn chair channels, lawn care channels are legit. Dude, there are so many dope channels out there. Um, and in this review world, you don't have to do all blogging content. You definitely can do YouTube content, but you gotta get hands on with your stuff to do YouTube. There's a dude, Wrangler Star, he's got hundreds of thousands. Like he's like axes and chainsaws and like, he's like a lumberjack and he just makes these videos and it's freaking amazing. Um, the primitive technologies guy makes iron and stone tools like from nothing from like mud in the ground he makes like mud huts and kilns and eight million subscribers it's like it's crazy um cool so my screen just jumped here um right now i have a personal channel thinking about changing to a branded channel you can't tell, i don't know i think i'm on a personal channel i haven't even tried that um do you as an affiliate marketer still have an llc and all of the business insurances that go with it so um I don't use LLC as my entity, as my structure. Um, and that's just because my accountant led me in a different uh, direction, something uh, other than that. It, it, it would be considered a, an alternative to that, I guess. So um, kind of, not really, my accountant led me in another direction. Do you have to have an LLC set up before? No, not at all. Um, you will need to give them some sort of identifiable piece for you, which is either gonna be your social security number or your EIN. They're gonna need that in a W-9 form in order to pay you. They can't pay you over $600 in the US. You, I don't know what country you're in. Uh, they can't pay you over $600 a year without getting 
that W-9 document. You have the choice. It could be in your, your entity, right? Your, your corporation or your LLC's name, or it could be you personally. Uh, for the first seven or eight years, I was just me, right? I just gave my social security number and I just went. And it wasn't until the self-employment expenses were way more. I, I waited too long. Uh, I, I was able to start an entity and, and build out a different structure that saved me a bunch of money on taxes that essentially paid for itself. Um, and that, that was when I did it. Um, will I be using a special WordPress plugin for showing and comparing reviews? Nah, is it built in the theme page builder? So that's, I'm having my developer, uh, right now he's actually working on, I want to create like a custom page type on, um, like a custom post type is what I'm shooting for. And maybe some short codes to make it work the way I want, because I think the layout does actually matter a lot. We've been spending a lot of time focusing on the layout. Really one of the big things we're focusing on is making sure that the best is up top. If you ever gone to a review and you're like scrolling and scrolling and they're like, okay, lawn care. So for the first lawn was invented in 70, I don't care, right? The sewing machine was invented in 1492 and you had to step on it with your foot and you had a little bird chirping and like, nobody cares. Like I looked for best sewing machine for that. Just show it to me. Like, cause some people are ready to click and go on. So I'm trying to build a custom post template. So no, I'm not using a plug in for that, uh, thrive themes. I'm going to do it all in thrive themes. If I get it done and it works really well, um, I think that I'm going to possibly, um, give it away as a freebie or put it inside of the content conversion membership. I don't know if it's something I can, I can put out and let you have access to, I might do it, but I'm probably going to gate it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what membership plugin do you use on your website? So we have active member 360 on one. I have a hand coded thing on my content and conversion because I use Zenforo and I'm migrating over to Thinkific actually won the competition of all. I went Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi, and Thinkific won. And that's where we're migrating to on the other site right now. So, um, so Annette Europa, I want to learn more about affiliate marketing. Where do I start? Are there any courses? Description, the description of this video. I have my free, my free course. I have my playlist on it. I have my, um, you got to watch the video. It's linked in the description. It's, um, the make money online treasure map. If making money online was a board game and I laid it on my whiteboard as if it was a board game like monopoly or sorry, or any of the board games we played as kids, um, that will give you the clear understanding of how it works. There is a premium course that I link to. It's the course that I've given my team, but uh, all the links, just go watch the videos, go through the free stuff first. You very well might learn enough to get started. You're never going to know everything you need to do before you start. You're going to have to start, you're going to have to get on the path and you're just going to figure it out as you go along. Um, how much handholding and guiding you need is the difference between, are you going to invest 500 bucks in a course to follow, or are you just going to jump in and figure it out as you go? I didn't have $500 to invest when I started. So I just jumped in and figured it out. I also didn't have YouTube because I did it, it started in, in, oh, like it just, it wasn't like it wasn't a big popular thing when I, uh, when I started making money online, it wasn't a thing, but when we really got going, it, it just wasn't like it is today, a library of um, help. So if money is an issue, how much work is it to do it yourself without hiring a team? I mean, so to me, a part-time entrepreneur spends 40 hours a week on their business. Okay. Like that's part-time a full-time entrepreneur is in the 65 to 75 hours a week range. Um, a side hustle is 20 hours a week. Okay. So I, I don't consider somebody doing 20 hours a week chiseling, like you're chiseling away at it. Good on you. That's a side hustle, but really, you know, you got to get up to that, that 40 hours a week. So how do you get to 40 hours a week? If you have a day job, um, well, sleep is probably the easiest thing to start to remove, uh, Netflix parties with friends, barbecues, happy hours. Um, there's a lot of things that people spend a lot of time on that, that are total suck. The average American still to this day watches an average of like five hours of television a night. And that includes all digital media. What? That's amazing. So five hours a night times seven nights is 35 hours a week right there. So on top of that, do seven hours, eight hours on Saturday, eight hours on Sunday, five hours the rest of the nights, you are now over 40 hours. Um, if you think that's ridiculous, it is. Uh, but that's what my wife and I did because we were flat broke. I had to move back in with my parents at 30. I literally sold both my cars for cash. I had no vehicle. I had to borrow money for a car because I was pouring my money into an MLM. If you ever wonder why I'm so frustrated with the fake gurus and all that stuff is because I bought I bought into the hook, line, and sinker. I, all of my monies, everything. I just went down to absolute rock bottom. I bounced off rock bottom, uh, tail between my legs, had to go back home to the parents' house at 30 with my beautiful bride after promising her we were going to be successful entrepreneurs. Um, but that was a very motivating moment. Uh, disgust in oneself can be an incredibly motivating uh, emotion. And from that, I just 
I just, I stopped doing everything. Um, I just, all, I did nothing but work and still I kind of have that work ethic uh, because I will not let this go. I have caught lightning in a bottle. I acknowledge that. I'm grateful. I'm blessed and I'm sharing it as fast and as readily as I can with you. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to honor this lightning in a bottle by not pissing it away, thinking I can go buy Italian cars and, and hammocks on the beach and sell you scams because I have this thing called integrity. Um, and I really want to teach you how to build the skills that can help you build a real business because an affiliate marketing business, that's just an entrance point to a digital media business. That's what my wife and I own and run, right? If people ask me, what do I do? I, I own a, a digital media business or a digital publishing business is kind of how I answer that question because I get income from 40 or 50 different affiliate programs every month, right? I literally have dozens, scores of different streams of income that come in each and every month. Some come from a video I made two and a half years ago. Uh, others come from a blog post my wife wrote six years ago. We have all these little things and just it just it just comes in. And like, how do you encompass that? She has books, she has angel cards, I do videos, she does social media and, and just we're a digital publishing business. So getting an Affiliate marketing business going is an entrance into a digital media business. And at that point, you could write the book on lawn care if you've got the best lawn care reviews. At that point, you might be able to figure out how to do a course. Um, you might be able to do coaching. There's all kinds of ways it can go, right? Um, and that, that's the beauty of a digital marketing business is we can adapt and pivot as we go. So, um, all right, I'm just going to jump into some of these, grab a sip of my tea. You show me a paycheck for $10,000, I quit my effing job and I work for you. Yeah. So like nobody sends me paychecks, man, right? Like I don't get a paycheck. That means I have a boss. I ain't got a boss, right? I make income. I got residual. I got streams of income. I got residual income coming in from efforts I put out back, back, back in the day. Um, no checks. No, it just it just happens, right? I can be in foreign countries. I ain't got to touch a dang thing. Um, so Jeremy Ferguson, okay, that's a little conversation. I'm gonna skip that. Um, so Journey James, I'm a just-in-time learner. Good to hear. If anybody doesn't know what that is, I got a video on that, just-in-time versus just-in-case learning. Uh, good to hear you're a just-in-time learner. So it forces you to be a doer. Uh, wasn't planning to watch today, so you're trusting I'm gonna say, oh, that's it. I, I promise I will give you value, my man. Um, I'm excited. Thank you for your kind words. I do, I do appreciate it. Um, Cool. Uh, Brandon Styles is in the house. Miles, what do I think teaching online marketing in Arabic can be a thing? Of course it can. I mean, are there people in countries that speak Arabic that search for how to market their stuff? Are there shopkeeps who want to rank better on Google? Does I'm guessing Google works. And I mean, if Google doesn't, there, there is a search engine, right? Do people search YouTube uh, for things that they want or need? Do people search Google in Arabic for things that they want and need? Like, I guess so. I mean, are you ever like, you know, where's a pizza or where's some good Chinese food or like, where can I get some, you know, I don't know. Like, of course. Yeah. Like, of course it does. Um, Stefan, the millennial Senin, what do I, uh, do I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching? No, I don't. Um, I have a small group at content and conversion.com. Um, so I, it's a private form, essentially content and conversion.com is, is what I do have. Um, lifestyle Brown is in. So Orlando, I'm glad you dig that. Uh, Bradley Lau likes my no tenants, no toilets, no termites. If you've ever done real estate investing, it is often touted as passive income. There ain't no such thing as passive income. Even putting your money into an index fund is an active endeavor. You're choosing, you're choosing an asset allocation, you're choosing a fund, you're choosing domestic funds versus foreign funds. All of those are choices. They are active choices and your rewards are going to be determined based on the actions. And if you are going to hand all of your money over to a wealth manager, oh Lord, watch it go away and their pocket's not yours. But that even choosing that person is an active choice. So there's no such thing as passive income and uh, real estate investing is, oof, man, uh, there's a lot of challenges that can pop up and we deal with challenges in digital businesses, but we're light and nimble and I can hire developers all over the world to show up in an instant. Um, man, when a pipe breaks and this breaks and that breaks, like, oof, I, I don't want to be the one to go with that. Um, Mark says, how's the Wrangler going? Made any mods to it recently? Dude, I actually got rid of the Wrangler. I have 20 acres now. I had to get a truck. So I've got a one of the new medium sized diesel trucks and I'm, I'm going to get a slide in pop up camper, like a four wheel camper. It was a very, very, very sad day to see that thing go. Um, man, 
so much money invested, so many good times, but um, just build up that next thing. I needed a truck bed at this point with with all of the hauling and stuff I have to do here. So, but thank you for asking. Uh, she's on to a new owner who's gonna love her and enjoy her at this point. So Brandon Styles, do I have a minimum amount of estimated searches per month when it comes to creating content around keywords and phrases? Really, really low, Brandon. Like I am willing to go after some 200 to 400 search phrases, but, only when they are super, super specific, right? So I need this thing to be um, best sewing machine for beginner quilting. And I'm a badass quilter. And like, I just, I know I can really give that person exactly what they want. Um, so yes, when it is hyper, hyper focused, I love the 1000 to 10,000 search phrase range. Um, but 500 to 5,000, I think is just that sweet spot that all day long will go after it. And again, I'm always monitoring the keyword difficulty score. I do not look at search volume in isolation. I'm always analyzing kind of like, okay, so a thousand searches on this and a keyword difficulty of 35, 500 searches on this, but a keyword difficulty of 19. I'll probably send my team after that lower keyword difficulty one because I can probably rank and gobble up traffic more quickly, which means I could probably recoup my investment on content faster, that approach. Um, so that's kind of what I think on that. Um, Darius, good to have you here. I appreciate having you here. Good to see you. Um, I Darius, I think it was I Darius. Um, oh, from Nigeria as well, plan, plan B business. That's awesome. Um, have I ever developed and marketed my own SAAS, Francisco? Um, I have three software tools inside of my membership program. Uh, one is a YouTube optimization tool for my members. The other one is a SEO optimization for blog optimizations. Um, but I've never like marketed them on their own because I know people would just swipe them, steal them, and repackage them and, and resell them. Uh, so it's it's only a thing for for my inner circle members. I create useful tools and those tools I create for myself, my wife and my teammates is essentially, and I just share them with them because I've got these processes and I want things done. Like this is how I put out my videos. Um, and like, I'm like, okay, so I, I built a software around it to kind of force people to go through that process. Um, Justin Charnell, any thoughts on writing a book? My wife's got like five or six of them. They drive lots of great traffic, lots of great leads. Um, everyone in their world is now an Amazon bestseller. It's kind of lame. It's kind of annoying because they're bestsellers in categories that are non-relevant. And it's just, yeah, it's uh, it's the eighth place trophy at this point in time for, for adults. Um, but it can drive good traffic. We drive great quality leads. We have a forever free book on Amazon Kindle that brings us a ton of traffic. That was a really smart thing to set up. So they can be great marketing tools. I think if you're selling services, they can be a very powerful way for you to convey your method. Uh, so, uh, and a quick read, something that a CEO or a business owner could read while on vacation in an hour and a half by the pool, and they can get a picture of your process, your nine steps to whatever that result you give are. And then that usually can be a great selling tool um, in order to help people be like, you know what, I'm going to call that guy. Like, I want that result. I ain't got time. I don't have the team for it. I'm just going to hire the guy who wrote the book because clearly they're an expert. So it can be really powerful. Uh, Jamie G says, I can relate to the setbacks you mentioned. I've tried and failed at a myriad of things, uh, even went through bankruptcy, but through it all, you would not change a single thing about the journey. Jamie, I really do believe that the that successful people, they hit low points. They hit like, we, we are tested on this path. I don't know how or why, but we are just always tested and perseverance, right? It's like, do you really want it bad enough to get back up again? A champion is not someone who never gets knocked down. A champion is someone who always gets back up no matter how many times they get knocked down. Um, and that's what, that's what we're doing here. And I've been knocked down a lot. I even, I even outlined one video, like 13 of my failed businesses. I, I counted even 15 more than that over the time. I bought my first scam. Um, when I was like 12, it was, a uh, an ad in the back of the newspaper and it was like, make my, make money stuffing envelopes. And I took all, I think I had like $29 in, um, my allowances. I used to help my dad change the oil and yard work to get a little bit of allowance. And my dad was like, it's a scam. Oh, God damn. No, you don't do that. And I was like, no, it's my allowance. I want to do it. I was, I was like 12 years old and they mailed me this little packet. Um, you know, it's a bit of a story about why I'm so against the me too marketing. They mailed me a packet and the packet said, here's what you do. Step one, run the exact same ad that I just ran that you responded to step two, photocopy this booklet and mail it out. Every time someone mails you a check. My dad was furious. He was like fuming. He's got blood pressure things. And boy, he was just like, God, God, fucking shut up, brother, brother, brotherly, brotherly. And like, I was kind of let down, right? But like, that's it, right? It's like, buy 
the information to simply go buy the thing to go resell the thing. I don't care if it's a funnel software and they're like, oh yeah, buy in and then you can resell it. You make 40% commissions. Or if it's a, a forum, oh, join our affiliate forum and go sell our affiliate forum for us. Or if it's an MLM, go buy our supplement and then sell our supplement. Like it's always designed to get you doing the selling so other people can make the money. And uh, yeah, I was 12 when that first one happened. You think I would learn, but I've been in, I, I dabbled in a dozen network marketing companies and failed, 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 failed. But I kept getting back up. I kept trying something different. I kept with it. And thank goodness I did because um, what we got going on here is pretty amazing. So um, Justin Charnell, um, where did you go, Justin? Sorry, my comments jumped when I scrolled down on that. Um, if you have a question, get them in. I've got about, uh, I got a few more minutes. I, I need to get off here soon, but um, Prime Pickleball. Wow, you're here. What's up? Um, 12,000 plus YouTube subscribers and almost 5,000 on your email. You just crossed 10,000 subscribers on your channel like a couple of months ago. So it seems like everything is going in the right directions on the pickleball and there's another great niche, right? Pickleball niche. Like what a cool upcoming game that that's taking over the world. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, happy to have you here, Nicole. That's, that's fantastic. Um, Take care of your health. Important to do. Find ways to to find the balance and and got to take got to do the the you care time. Um, also, you know, someone may be using my name on Kindle. You just search my name on Kindle. Oh, don't even tell me that. Like, um, I'm searching it right now. Uh, go one star them if that really is actually a thing. Um, I got to go look for Amazon books if somebody actually has this. Oh, scam of the century. 99 cent book with my name on it, y'all. They aren't even a bestseller. Write a customer review. All right, I'm going right now. I'm gonna put this in. I want all of you, if you're here, like this is just this is just shady. And I want all of you to go one star this thing and go flame them if you wouldn't mind. I'm putting that in the comments below. Uh, and this is what I deal with. People, people steal my thumbnails people steal my titles this one dude literally stole my title and my description word for word and he made like eight videos copied everything i said everything i did and he disappeared another kid was on all my lives asked a bunch of questions i gave a bunch of time to this kid and he goes and steals my topics and my thumbnails exactly like there are so many shady people out there and, and if you wonder why i won't share my niche i'm going into it's because of this because like there's some shady stuff going on so i'll, I'll handle that here and I'm, I'm obviously gonna report that, but damn, that's just shady. Um, so that's in there. If you guys wanna go flame them with one stars, but please give it one star reviews. I'm gonna get that taken down. Um, so Stefan the Millennial says, for the dating niche, there's lots of resistance. Absolutely, there's resistance in every niche for sure. Um, how do you handle the client's expectation when you know that the info you're offering works, but the people face resistance implementing it? Sales copy, great sales copy. Uh, so when they don't accuse you of not providing good info. Yeah, like, so the idea of a stick video, 90% of people who purchase courses don't go through them at all. Like don't even go through them. Like 5% of people who buy courses actually get through them. So that's normal, okay? Um, so how do you get your people to take action? And this is why I don't sell courses because I have integrity and because I'm not a sociopath. A sociopath is someone who does things to others that they know don't help others, but are good for the self, right? Is being of service to self. And that's what all course sellers do. The $5,000 courses, the $2,000 courses. Oh, if they pay more, they'll value it more. Nope, still 90 plus percent of people don't even go through it at all. And they know this, all the course sellers in the world know this. They know that they're making money off the back of 90% of people who won't do anything and they're cool with it. I'm not cool with it. So that is your challenge. How do you get people to take action? And guess what? You crack that nut and you figure that out and you have one. Um, so that's, that's it. Stick videos. You got to resell them on it after they buy it. You got to walk them through the process through an email sequence. You might need to do weekly phone calls. You might need to get on the phone with them. You might need to mail them handwritten letters. You might need to add bonuses. You might need to be in a Facebook group every single day with them. Like, what are you going to do? It ain't them. It's you. It's always a you. If, if they aren't taking the action after buying your course, you didn't do something right. It always falls on you. And that's always. For sure. Um, do I silo structures around my affiliate post? I do for sure. Um, how do I come up with so many topics? I showed it at the beginning of the video. If you didn't see that best motivation videos, go check out, watch the video, the biggest of the video. What's the biggest SEO misconception that floats around that is holding people back? Um, 
I don't know, this is difficult, right? That is difficult. It's like keyword research, get it in the title, get it in the right places and build authority to your site. Like it just wins. Uh, Adarius, Idarius, uh, how often do you put a keyword inside a blog post after you've optimized within the headline, the H1 tag? I don't know, a couple of times. Go look at what the other sites around you have as their density. That would be what you would want for your keyword density, but not much. Use lots of variations, not that many exact is what I would do. Um, I mentioned... Mark did a 90 day challenge on YouTube, uh, but the 90 videos gained you 20 subs. That's awesome, man. Um, with the quality of vids, what are the main problems holding the process back? So did you stop? Cause if you stop, that's the problem, right? A 90 day challenge is the beginning point. That means you are out of the gates. You have started. That's your opportunity to get comfortable making videos. That is not an audience growth move. That is a you learning how to YouTube move. Um, I'm 530 videos in and I got this dialed now. So if you did 90, cool. Uh, how long are you going to be at 250, right? I hit 250 videos within my first year. Um, so just keep going. That, that really is a trick. You'll get better. Um, how well can you build a business through free traffic like Pinterest, Facebook groups, Quora, and Reddit? I like search engines better, Imani, than I do uh, social and those platforms. But like this whole brand has made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was all organic, right? My wife's brand makes, you know, an insane amount of money. It's mostly organic. All our leads come from organic. Even though I do a lot of Facebook advertising, it still comes from organic. Um, Kamikaze, dude, back when Squid Do was a thing, this guy was legit and just copied your lens. And he somehow got it to rank about above yours. That's hilarious. Um, so there's, there's a difference between copying and getting inspiration and modeling. And, and if you're copying people, that's a problem. If you're modeling, then that will help you kind of understand how to do things from there. Um, I gotta call it y'all. That's it. Um, I appreciate you. So Annette Europa, what social media platform do you make the most money? I don't. It's search engines. I'm a search engine marketer. I think social media marketing is hype. It's crap. It's things Zuckerberg want you to believe in. So you'll spend more time on Instagram. So you'll spend more time on Facebook, right? The, the winners of you doing social media marketing are the social media marketing platforms. I'm not saying there's not people successful on those platforms. There are, uh, but I want search engines. I want to find somebody who's searching for a thing and I now have know what that thing is and I'm going to help them get what they want. How do I know what they want? Because they search for it. Like that's it. It's super, super simple in that, in that well, in that world. Um, cool. So Jamie couldn't one star them. I'm gonna get that taken down on Amazon. So yet again, somebody stealing my stuff and stealing my name. Here I am trying to go forward and build things and people are pulling shady stuff. Welcome to the internet, my friends, but it won't stop me. It won't deter me. It won't break my spirit. I'm here to help you grow a true, actual successful business. Um, I think Tony Chambers, uh, Affiliate marketing in the financial sector works wonders. People want to make money, spend money, right? Want to invest money, spend money. Um, there, uh, Yvonne, I'm the only Miles Becker in the world. Go search around, like literally try to find another Miles Becker. They didn't capitalize their first name and their last name is, is another thing that they, they did and didn't do. Um, yeah, Journey James, this stream should have 124 thumbs up right now. 136 watching, 56 people have thumbs it up. Not one thumbs it down, so that's cool. None of the fake gurus who, who hate me hating on them showed up. Uh, that's kind of funny. So yeah, I appreciate you. I do appreciate engagement, but ultimately, I'm just here to help, right? Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beg for it. I'm just gonna try to keep this momentum of I'm the most helpful marketer in the world. I'm gonna teach you the right way to do it. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing within reason because people obviously copy and swipe, but I just want you to take action because you can change your life. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end. I thank you. I appreciate you. I'm going to be putting up a video here. What is it? It's Wednesday, right? So I did live on Wednesday. So my next video will be Thursday or fr uh, Friday or Saturday. Probably do it Saturday. It'll be pre-recorded one and I'll do a live maybe next week with you guys. Until then, let's uh, connect again and um, you can do it. I know you can and I want to help and I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you what I'm doing so you can take steps forward. All the links you need to get that next step from here are in the description. So just start going through those in the description. Watch my free videos, my affiliate marketing trainings. Um, that will get you on the path. Everything you need is in the description to get started. You need to get started. You need to start publishing. How quick can you get to 100 great posts? I'm looking at about a year. I'm, I'm eight months to a year away from having 100 great posts. I'm not even really going to measure how well this is doing until I'm at least over 100, 120 posts because that's just that's just the starting point, right? You ain't really Google's like, ah, you don't have a hundred posts. Like, I don't really know if you're actually serious yet. People think it's a flash of the pan thing. It's not, um, it takes a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end. So cheers. I do appreciate you. And I will see you on the next video when it comes out. So subscribe, hit the bell, engage, thumbs up, like, comment. Thanks.